Through YouTube, I've met some amazing people. I love all of you out there. I really am very thankful for every single one of you, especially because of how massively shadow banned I am and the ones that are stuck with it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And this is from a buddy of mine named Chris, one of you who I've actually become great friends with. Awesome dude. He gave me a pack of cards from Panama that were his grandmother's, the inaugural edition. I'm not sure. I'll put the year down below. I'm not sure right now, but they are awesome. And so I had to scan them in. They tell about. They tell a great story. Mud flood of whatever these dams. How ancient they are. How they were. I'm always torn whether. We were capable of creating this in the 1800s or if this stuff is really ancient and they just manipulated the photos to make it seem different. I'm totally torn. I could go either way. I'm up to learn. But this cards and these deck of cards have an amazing wealth of cool knowledge of that time in that place. And I wanted to share with you all because it's really magic and really cool. Great pictures, great cards, very rare very awesome. So I'll show the cards and I'll read the descriptions that are included in this booklet. And you guys can think what you will. I'll propose some theories and we'll just keep it going. But very interesting stuff. And so we're going to start with the diamonds. And I also went to Panama about uh, 10 years ago maybe. It was the poorest place I've ever been. It was actually where I discovered Octavio Ocampo. I got a painting of his at a uh, flea market kind of market there. But wow, what a place. And this, the ruins of the old tower, the Joker, destroyed by Morgan. But that is a hint of this old mud flood, ancient aspect of this whole area. So it makes you wonder what was here before, what was repurposed, what was destroyed, what was rebuilt, what was replenished, because the military took control of this area. It says the cities of Panama and Cologne, although lying within the zone boundaries, are excluded from it by treaty and belong to the Republic of Panama. The canal zone is directly under the military rule of the United States, which acquired perpetual control of it from the Republic. So very interesting. Here we go. The Ace of Diamonds, the Tivoli Hotel in Angson. The handsome Tivoli Hotel operated for the convenience of employees and visitors to the zone. So that could be built uh, in this time period, same time period as this thing was being created. Who knows? Ancone from Ancone Hill. Ancone is the suburb of Panama lying across the line within the zone. The view right here is taken from Ancone Hill on which is the hospital whose grounds are shown in the next picture, which we are going to see right now. Ancone Hospital Buildings and Grounds. The principal hospital of the zone placed on one of the healthiest spots of the isthmus standing high on Ancone Hill and receiving the wholesome breezes of the Pacific. It is an inter interesting fact that the zone is now the healthiest tropical spot in the world. Not a single case of yellow fever, the former scourge of Panama has been known since 1906. Wow, <laughs> I wonder why that scourge happened. Here we go, Four of Diamonds. Family houses in Bishop's Hollow, Ancone, showing the excellent conditions among which the workers live. And again, take into consideration what they said about no yellow fever in 1906 and what we now know about how they manipulate and create problems and plagues all over the place whenever they want to take over an area, just like they probably did here. Five, administration building Ancone. Not much information about that. Looks like it's freshly created, but you never know. Is it from a reset? Is it from a past civilization? Is it from the past that we get this particular style? Or is it us? Who knows? Bird's eye view of Culebra. This town is near the principal point of the famous Culebra Cut, which extends nine miles through the continental divide from Obispo, nearly to the lock at Pedro Miguel. In the picture, the canal excavation is seen along the right of the line of houses. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. 7. View of the ICC Hotel at Balboa, showing the general style of the large airy frame structures with wide porches thoroughly screened, which house those employed on the work. As can be seen, the buildings are raised from the ground on piles. So interesting. They just took over this area and they built a ton. I wonder where all these funds were coming from. No idea. 8. Marine encampment at Camp Elliot, one of the temporary government posts kept up during the progress of the work. So definitely keep in mind that the construction on the canal began in 1904 and was completed in 1914. 
So a lot happened before and during that. Nine, new station at Gatun showing the excellent station buildings and roadbed along the relocated Panama Railway. It was necessary to relay the line as the former tracks are beneath the waters of Lake Gatun. So I wonder how old those former tracks are and what old civilization was running those. There's tons of theories about that. General view of Gatun. This town will no doubt be the most important place on the Isthmus, as it is the site of the three twin locks which afford communication between the Atlantic Ocean and Lake Gatun. In the picture is shown a bridge passing over the railway line. The valley in the right hand corner is beneath the waters of Lake Gatun. It is expected that wharves and docks will spring up along the lake near the town, where will be excellent opportunity and ample space for loading, unloading, and overhauling ships in the tranquil freshwater lake. Very cool. And the Jack is just a colon hospital located in one of the healthiest spots of the Atlantic coast of the Isthmus. The Queen, Roosevelt Avenue, fronting Colon Bay, a view in Cristobal, the suburb of Colon, lying within the zone. And when I went to Panama a long time ago, we actually took a cruise and parked in Colon and then drove there. And it was the poorest thing I've ever seen, poorest place I have ever seen. And I'm sure that is probably partly a result of the Americans. And the King, New Washington Hotel Colon. Looks pretty mud flooded to me. Looks like it might have had stuff on top and might definitely go below as well. Who knows? But the clubs are coming up next. And so the general description says excavation and general work along the canal. The enormous excavation required was one of the great factors which made the Panama Canal the most gigantic engineering work yet undertaken. The average haul of material taken out was about 10 miles so that its disposal involved very considerable labor. The work was complicated by slides at various points in which much of the material of the slides was gradually slipping into the excavation and eventually had to be removed before the canal was finished. The total cost of the canal is estimated at 400 million. And so the ace right here is Balboa and Pacific Terminal of the canal, railroad yards and wharves at the Pacific end of the canal, just before it meets the Bay of Panama. So again, very interesting. How many times have these built up? How many ancient places were around here? How many places were, maybe there was something here and they kind of built from it. They had maybe some canal walls in place or something. I have no idea. I don't claim to know again, but these pictures are very cool and they're worth uh, trying to just see what we can figure out here. Cool machinery. Drilling Gamboa Dyke preparatory to blasting. Preparing to remove the temporary division supporting Lake Gatun from the cut. And it's also interesting to check um, Cape Cod because they definitely in the early 1900s or late 1800s cut a canal there too. And they have excellent photo photographic proof as well. So it is possible. And uh, flooding Culebra cut through Gamboa Dyke by means of four 20-inch pipes. The waters of Gatun Lake were admitted to the cut before the dike was destroyed. So, wow, they're doing some serious stuff. And some of the concrete looks a little weathered in some of the pictures, too, I noticed. So, it's again, everything can be manipulated, everything. So, you have no idea what to think. Four, the Gamboa Dyke explosion, removal by dynamite of the barrier between Gatun Lake and the cut. So, maybe uh, that was put there for a reason in time, but the old constructors of all the canals worldwide, all the coastlines that were prepped and definitely anciently created. Five, blowing up of Miraflores Dyke. So they were just blowing stuff up left and right, and they loved blowing stuff up. So there's no telling how many things they blew up all over the world, all over everywhere. How much history can be destroyed with just lighting one fuse. Excavating for new dry docks at Balboa. Illustrating the method of removing excavated material in dirt trains. And that's again another another way they could fill up and blow up a lot of places and get rid of a lot of rubble, move it around so it never gets placed, you know, blow up something in the west and then ship it all the way to the east so no one can ever put it together. These people are creative. They're jerks and evil, but they're creative. Not these people building, but the people in control. Steam shovel and Culebra cut. A single 90-ton shovel has taken out in less than seven hours actual work, 3,941 cubic yards of earth and stone, equivalent to a mass 120 feet long, 60 feet wide, and 15 feet deep. And that's a steam shovel. They should still be using steam power. Eight, Bass Obispo cut. Looking south, cutting at the point where ships pass from the broad waters of Lake Gatun to the narrower waterway extending for nine miles through the mountains of the Continental Divide. 
and it definitely makes sense this whole purpose of kind of cutting it and making it a lot much of a shortcut and whatnot so it's curious there's no telling how the world was the canal at empire with empire bridge very interesting and what was along those walls are all those rubbles like ruins of something ancient or who knows 10 dredge working cucaracha slide the mass of fallen material at the left gives an idea of the tremendous difficulties overcome in conquering this famous slide yeah that's got to be tough when things are just you're blowing stuff all over the place reshaping the entire landscape and then not really caring for for much so who knows what the animal the life and everything that was there the history all suffer jack dredging at north end of cucaracha slide attacking some of same slide at another point so they definitely had their work cut out for them this is not an easy task no matter what no matter what time period it is queen culebra cut looking north dredges in foreground attacking slide much of the difficulty of the work came from these slips some of very large extent which deposited hundreds of thousands of tons in the canal bed to be laboriously removed by the shovel so that shovel wow it's pretty powerful of machinery during this early early time and to be going on steam too to be able to do all of this with steam very impressive i think King, view of slides at Culebra. The three dredges are shown at work on three different slides. So uh, it must have been, either way, whatever the truth is, it must have been fun to be there, kind of. If you weren't working tremendously hard, <laughs> that would not be fun. Too hot and a lot of work. So the Ace of Spades, now we go to the Spades, which are the construction of the massive locks and dams. There are six flights of twin locks in the canal, three at Gatun, one at Pedro Miguel, and two at Miraflores. At each point, the locks are constructed in duplicate, side by side. Each lock is 1,000 feet long, 110 feet wide, with a depth of water of 40 feet. The largest plant of the kind in the world has been required for mixing and distributing the concrete used. So a lot of this could be ancient technology that they used to do powerful things like this and then got rid of. Or maybe even they had lost the technology to make these canals and they just kind of refigured it out, but not as powerful as the ancient Egyptians and whoever who were cutting all those things. But here we go. Ace, general view of, view of Gatun, upper locks, and lake from water tower. The great Gatun dam is seen in the middle distance. Bird's eye view of Gatun lakes looking south. This view shows distinctly the three double flights of locks at Gatun. Wow. So much work. Absolutely. And it's just it's just remarkable these people. I wonder how I think I heard they lost a lot of people, a lot of workers, a lot of people perished in this undertaking. 3. West and East Chambers, Gatun Lock, looking south, taken from rear range tower, Gatun. The expanse of Gatun Lake is seen in the background. I wonder how many natives were also uh, displaced or hired or enslaved during this process. Dear God. 4. South approach wall and upper lock. East chamber Gatun. At the left is seen a portion of the emergency dam. Wow. I wonder who, um, what companies really put together this and they must have been, uh, who knows. I heard they were building another one or China was building another kind of bridge between the, the continents. Five, approach to South Guard Gates, Upper Locks, Gatun. But that China thing, I'm not sure. I haven't heard much about it in a while, but I remember hearing that they've displaced things, they flooded things, they had to dam up certain things. It's just all, just all wild. And I wonder if it's just a continuation of the ancient builders, you know, this kind of, the people that know are uh, taught the methods and uh, from the ancients, which they are hiding from us, all the tricks. Six, boats in middle and lower locks, Gatun. In the distance, the canal extends at sea level to the Atlantic. And I wonder where the, if, there, if these were the first locks or where the other first locks were and how ancient they were. Maybe someone knows the uh, truth about that in there. And again, I'm just like verbally blasting off stuff as I write. So ignore any of this. I'm just theorizing a lot. Seven, East Emergency Dam swung across locks Gatun, the powerful mechanism devised to prevent destruction of the locks in case of severe accident. And I'm sure they had that. I remember they had to expand the locks too to get cruise ships in at, later on at a later date. Emergency dam with girders down. A nearer view of emergency dam with girders lowered. 
So this technology, you know, I wonder how ancient it is or if these uh, engineers from the time were borrowing from ancient technology or if they were devising it on their own to fit the landscape and to fit their inventions, but not sure. Nine, West Chamber from Emergency Dam, a general view of Gatun Lakes from the upper end. And those locks are pretty cool. I remember being in a cruise ship and, and kind of celebrating while it was happening. And it, it was really neat. It was very interesting. You just kind of move a little forward. Then you go down. The water fills up. Then it moves. And you slowly move. It, it was really, really very interesting. Ten, arches and south guard gates. Pedro Miguel locks. Near view showing massive construction of the gates. And really just massive construction. Where are they getting all of this? You know, I wonder if some of these were fed, like imagine if these, uh, these societies at this time, these civilizations were fed by some cross-border, beyond-the-pole civilization that just had infinite resources and much more. First boats through Pedro Miguel locks, an enthusiastic crowd watching the first passage. That would be pretty celebratory of an event. I bet they were partying hard then. I'd love to experience that. No one taking selfies, no one caring, everyone just in the moment. Queen, aquatic sports at Miraflores locks. Water sports held September 1st, 1913 at Miraflores. So they were trying to build a whole area down here, trying to re kind of make it into something, maybe even like a, uh, whatchamacallit, one of those places in the Middle East, you know, taking a random spot and turning it into a city by adding things like this. King, looking south from Miraflores locks. From this point, canal stretches at sea level to the Pacific. They did it. They made it all the way. Really crazy what an accomplishment you can't deny that but the truth surrounding it who knows if we're being fed the exact truth in our stories we never are so why would we believe we aren't here you know that's why i'm questioning a lot of stuff i could be wrong could be right who knows don't care so the hearts show life in the republic of panama outside the zone the old city of panama and the surrounding regions of the isthmus are of considerable historic interest and extremely picturesque it is noteworthy that the Panama Railroad, which has done so much to bring about the commercial importance of Panama, was the work of Americans who began it in 1849 through the incentive given by the enormous traffic across the Isthmus during the California Gold Rush of that time. It was completed in 1855 and is said to have cost a life for each tie along the road. Wow. And look at these ruins in this. The famous flat arch of San Domingo Church. There is no way that we are being told the exact truth about that. Look at some of these ruins and buildings in here. And this one, the famous flat arch ruins of San Domingo Church, Panama. This peculiar piece of architecture, which has stood since the burning of the church two centuries ago, affords a strong argument that the Isthmus cannot have experienced very severe earthquakes since that time. Its construction is such that a very slight shock would seem sufficient to destroy it yet it's been around that much time um, I think again now you can start to see the history rewriting occurring and the kind of oh look don't look at this too much uh, look, we'll, we'll tell you what it is don't even question it so that you don't even think and here is another one the Cathedral of Panama the famous old Spanish Cathedral built in 1760 and one of the most picturesque buildings of its type now in existence look at that and was that the only thing when in 1760 they built that was there only one or were they building all kinds of buildings like that and if they said the earthquake conveniently would bring that last one to rubble if there was just a slight shake how many things were slightly shaken with dynamite and then exploded and then carted off to places and when the Americans came over and they did that railroad I'm sure they took down whatever was in their path and I'm sure they did not let any of the information out except giving to the real rich people who are also taking the golden San Fran the administration building Panama the principal edifice of the government of the Republic of Panama a handsome white marble structure I wonder where they got all that where they quarried all that from and what time period that was in and what its original purpose was and for who for street scene Panama headquarters of the Panama lottery at the drawing they've been having lottery having people waste their money in lotteries for uh, how many years i wonder that just <laughs> all these different things just show like a glimpses of a past where they didn't know too much and now we're looking at it with what we know and maybe we're wrong but 
we're getting some good insight, I believe, from other sources that we carry on to this. Like showing the method of the Cemetery of Panama, showing the me method of burial in niches along the wall shown in the picture. And if you've seen John Levy's recent video, there was stuff like this that I thought was tombs, kind of he thought was kilns and other things, but they're all over the place. These arches in the Midwest, all different kinds of tombs and cemeteries built like this. And if you're building a cemetery like this, you're far more advanced than a civilization that's just digging holes in the ground and throwing people in. Things like this would be considered Roman, ancient, so, if they were in so many other places, but they're over here, so those are totally disconnected by our warped view of history. So, but wow, think about it, really. <laughs> remarkable what they could have gotten rid of seawall panama the tide at this point is very high giving a difference of level of from 16 to 22 feet between high and low water at high tide the sea laps the base of the wall at low water a mile of mud flats is exposed on the other hand the atlantic coast at cologne is practically tideless the twin towers of the cathedral are seen in the central distance in the picture seven Coasting boats at Panama. A collection of motley craft of every description is always to be found clustered about the wharves of Panama. I would love to be someone just sailing around the ocean, a master of the sea just going from San Fran to Panama to wherever during this time. That would be remarkable. You'd see so much, know so much, and not believe any of the nonsense. Eight, native children pounding rice, showing the primitive method of preparing rice used by the natives. <laughs> primitive or ancient or you know easy simple nice the way and were these natives from a distant civilization refugees from a distant war who knows new tramway system in Panama City showing the older method of travel by carriage in the new electric car oh what is it now that we're trying 2020 120 years later and we're starting to get electric cars that probably don't work nearly as good as even the ones that did in Panama 1900 pretty sad Washerwoman at work, Panama. The absence of modern laundry methods is one of the points which first strikes a vis visitor to the isthmus. So instead of dumping chlorine and all kinds of terribly toxic things all over your clothes that you wear into the water system, all this stuff, they were doing it in a way that was very clean and very good to nature and in harmony and probably a lot healthier for everything. It's, oh, these primitives. Jack, <laughs> a tropical scene in Tobago. Toboga. The native construction of grass and mud huts is fast disappearing. The island of Taboga is the seat of a sanitarium for the zone employees. Huh. So the ones that maybe uh, knew too much or uh, went nuts because they were pushed too hard or couldn't deal with doing things badly to innocent. Queen, general view of Panama City, panorama of Panama and Pacific from Ancon Hill. Very interesting. I wonder how many times it's been built up or if there was a fire here at one point that ruined it all. And here we go. New railroad station, Panama City. Wow. And that's got some pretty hefty columns for this time when they're just getting the electric car. They've just, these people are washing their things in wooden basins, all this stuff. And their people before them were building Panama. There is just so much proof that we are not being told the exact truth. And history did not progressively get smarter as time went on. We got smarter, we got dumb. We got smart, we got dumb. We got a genius, masters, and then back to dumb again. And it happened so many times, it's impossible to even fathom. But I want to read this one more. I'm going to end with the Joker here. Ruins of tower in old Panama destroyed by Morgan. The old city founded 1518 became the gateway to the gold and silver mines of Peru and rose to be an opulent metropolis of over 5,000 dwellings and 200 warehouses containing a fine hospital, a chamber of commerce, a handsome cathedral, monasteries and churches. It was sacked and burned in, 18, in 1671 by the buccaneer Morgan, Captain Morgan, who carried away 175 mule loads of treasure and more than 600 prisoners. So how easy is it for them to blame this fairy tale or this fable of Captain Morgan and all these different things for what they most likely did? The finding gold in the in the 1500s, gold and silver mines of Peru. So what were they? Who was the one that was manning this uh, pillaging of the mines? And it probably wasn't the Peruvians who were like doing it and living here, and the Panamanians. It was probably some other force. And since they were establishing cathedrals, so they say, we don't know. They could be from other civilizations, other purposes entirely. Because how can these poor people build these things? There is something huge 
glaring at us all in the face, something we are missing, something we are not told, something we've been lied to so much about that we like just can't grasp, we can't grasp it yet, but it's out there just waiting to be solved. And when it does, we're all gonna kick ourselves and be like, wow, how did we not get this? When we find one book or something, some source that tells the truth about all this and who is always in control, and then we can hopefully figure out how to stop it, reverse it, and fix all these things because it is going out of control. And we need to know where we come from. It's part of who we are. It's part of who we are right now, and it's part of why we can't let it go any further without knowing. We must know. So here's a bunch of theories. I hope you liked them. I hope you enjoyed the things. Thanks again, Chris, for the cards. I truly appreciate it. Your grandmother and grandparents are living on by this video, so we'll keep it going. And anyone, anytime you guys want to send me anything, please feel free. I absolutely love it. You all are awesome. Bless you all.